Hey, Cyprint here. Welcome again on this series of videos about Paraview. Today I'll show you how to uh, how to play with the rendering of uh, your your data. So we'll play with surface rendering, volume rendering. Uh, I'll show you a few tricks to, to to change the way to view at your data and to view it in the correct way. And also I'll show you how to play with the color map to to visualize the data in this way. So let's start. So first of all, let's uh, reset all my session. Okay, now I got the, the Paraview, the, the exactly the same that you should have when you just start the program. And I'll start by opening my uh, example, which should be in your Paraview install folder. And I'm opening this one disk out. This is the same I showed you in the previous videos. Let's apply and display this. So by default, I have no result. So I'll show up temperature and uh, velocity. And uh, I don't need the pressure. Okay, just that. So let's look at the temperature field. So by default, let's say the, the kind of visualization we are usually used to look at is the surface type of visualization. So it's the most basic type where uh, you look at the results which are kind of printed on the surface of your model. Uh, Paraview allows various ways to look at, at your data. So you could um, look at the points, for example, so here's a bit difficult to see. Let's make those points a bit bigger. So if I go down in the properties, let's make the point size to five. Okay, five is much better. So now I'm looking at um, what I'm looking at basically is the point representation of the surface. So if you look very closely, you s you'll see that inside you don't see what's going on inside your volume, and that's actually important. Sometimes you want to know. Uh, what is the field distribution of the temperature within the volume. Uh, it's not that easy to, to look at this field from uh, this kind of uh, surface representation. So we'll look at, there is an option called volume rendering. Just before I look at that, let's look at other types of surface representation, the point Gaussian. So this point Gaussian um, in some way also allows you to look inside the model because it, it shows you all the points of the elements within. So it could be some way to play with that as well. Um, it's not that clear either, but it's, it's, a, it's a way. Um, and you have surface with edge, so it's the same than the surface, but this time it shows the, the mesh elements on the surface. Uh, and you have wireframe. So wireframe it's uh, basically the same, except that it's not colored, the elements are not colored, only the, the wireframe of the elements are colored. Okay, now let's look at the volume rendering. So volume rendering is a bit different. And the first time you use it, you'll have a message telling you, uh, do you want to uh, do volume rendering? Because this will use, I think, the GPU of my computer. So uh, it may be slower than other types of presentation, especially if you have a very big volume. And what am I looking at now? So it's very important to to understand what I'm looking at. So volume rendering is different because you get um, you get basically the solid mesh, which is rendered as a translucent cloud with the color field determining the color and the density at every point, at every point in the cloud. So your, your color here, uh, and you see it's, um, the transparency is changing also. So, what more you are going into the blue scale, more it becomes transparent. And the way to play with this transparency stuff is to open the color legend, uh, no, not the color legend, sorry, the, um, to edit the color map. So you, you can open it here or you can go in the view and uh, activate the color map editor. It's the same. And, and here you will see your data uh, maps like this. And um, now you may be, so this is called the transfer function. And so this, he, this is the color basically. So you could, if you move the point, you see that the, the color range is changing. 
you can add a new point like this. So you could change the values associated to each color. And you see that the representation of those color change in real time uh, at the same uh, at the same time. Now, why do I have this curve going up here? Uh, this is to control the transparency, actually. So if I go and I tap here and I decrease here, you kind of see the color don't change, but the transparency of the field kind of change. And if I increase this like that, you see that the the presentation of the volume here becomes less and less transparent. So when I'm going down, I'm going towards zero, the transparency goes towards zero. When I go towards one, the transparency increases again. So this is uh, this allows you to play with range of cool option to to visualize your, your data. Now um, the good thing about this volume rendering is that because it's transparent, you can mix it with uh, another type of uh, visualization. For example, with the, the the stream the stream filter that I showed you in one of the previous video. Let's try to make it. Uh, so I already showed in a previous video how to do it. So I'll go very quickly on uh, on this. So let's add this stream filter. Stream Tracer. Okay. So if you don't have the velocity within your result, the Stream Tracer will be inactivated. So make sure you added the velocity. Let's apply this. Let's temporarily uh, hide the volume rendering. And let's just um, get representation. This should be uh, surface. Okay, not that one. Ah, seed type point source. Okay. This I have to apply. Now let's uh, apply tube filter. So remember, I'm, I'm using control space to open the the the, the quick filter like that. Now I'm looking at this. Let's okay, it's colored for with the temperature, which is cool. Let's add a glyph filter. Enter. Apply. So by default, this shows in this direction. That's not what I want. Orient it in the V velocity and scale it to velocity V. And now I'm getting. Uh, maybe I should scale it a bit more. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so now I have that. If you want to to the slowest. Uh, way I did all this with the, all the explanation in detail, just watch the previous video I had on the stream so that this will be much more clear. This is just to show you quickly that you can have a representation like this. Volume rendering plus um, plus this type of uh, uh, stream at the same time. And this is very useful because it shows you uh, how the temperature is impacting the movement of the velocity of the fluid within your uh, within your parts. Now, the last thing I want to show you in this video is uh, the color map. Let's talk a bit about the color map because this is a subject that not so many people talk about, um, but it's actually pretty important. Uh, let's so you have an option here which is very cool uh, in let you choose a preset. So you have various uh, ways you could uh, render and you have actually more, but some are, are hidden. If you look at all, you see you really have a bunch of those. So the default one and only those ones. You can even import your own color map if, uh, if that's what you want. Uh, now let's talk quickly about the rainbow color. So let's apply the rainbow color. Let's look at those colors. So rainbow colors look like this, right? Um, and this, maybe this is one of the color scheme, which is um, the more liked by people. It's a po popular choice, um, but actually it's not a very good way to represent your data because um, uh, it has numerous per perceptual properties that, that can be used to hide 
uh, the, the good visualization of the data. But that's not uh, what we want. And for example, uh, it's very, let's say, the, the first problem with about this color scheme is that it's unnatural. Um, it doesn't represent something that in nature we would see. So we don't uh, feel mm, the data. We don't, uh, it doesn't really represent or in a meaningf meaningful way what we want to see. And sometimes it just um, represents it wrongly. So for example, we can have the impression that in some areas r results are changing quickly. Uh, between some some different colors and we we may think oh there there's a problem here in my model because colors are changing quickly but actually there's no problem at all it's just the way the the color scheme is uh, displaying certain types of results um, and the other problem about this color scheme is that it's not um it's not good because some people cannot see the difference uh, between certain types of colors used in this color scheme. So for example, 5% uh, five per five of the population cannot distinguish between the red and the green colors. So if you use that, people just who have this kind of uh, you know, visual deficiency, color deficiency problems, they, they just don't see the difference and uh, uh, get, get some kind of thing that can easily be uh, misinterpreted. So the best way is to choose a color scheme which is good to represent your data. And here we're looking at temperature. So the best color scheme which is used for temperature is this one, black body radiation. It's a really cool one. Let's look at it quickly. And in this one, it's really clear that more it's going to be white and more the intensity of uh, the temperature is high. And then it goes cold, it goes to black. and it shows um, it's basically a very very good way to represent your temperature and this is the way that has been used uh, by let's say all, all the all the companies very serious about temperature analysis they're all using this uh, scheme now um, I can also change this legend you know you play with the play with the opacity and all this and if um, you want something exact, you don't, you know, want to drag and drop like this, you can also click on this small manual edit transfer function. And here you get the actual values of the opacity uh, for each of the values set up here. So when you create a new value, this automatically appears in the table and uh, you can update the exact value. Now, um, maybe one last thing I'd like to show you is how do you change the background color uh, and maybe the legend color because sometimes you don't like this kind of background color. So if you go in the property, property window, there should be a background a property. So here I don't see it. And it's because uh, the properties that are shown here in the property window, those are not all the properties. So sometimes you have to just go into the search field and type background, so tap back, and you'll see here background uh, appearing. So, and you can choose the color of the background here. Click on that and pick the color, let's say white. And you see the background changes in white color. Now the legend uh, now is displayed in white as well, so I cannot see it. And to, to change that, there is a button here so you, you can either go back in the property background uh, and just find the coloring and you have something like a button at the extreme left just for the legend or you can go in color map and you have the same button here on the right edit the color legend properties in which um, you can edit actually the fonts um, the size all, all of those things and you can change the color by clicking on the small circle like this. Apply. And I'll, I'm getting the legend in uh, this black color. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. 
and uh, I'll see you in one of the next video. If you, if you like my video, please like it and help me share it with your friends. It helps me a lot to motivate me to create more videos. Thank you again and bye.